This video will go through the most commonly used application profiles such as Home Automation, Smart Energy, and Zigbee Light Link. These profile specifications are available on the zigbee.org for free. It is important to point out that Zigbee is planning on merging all of the profiles in approximately late 2015. Let's discuss the profiles in a bit more detail. The home automation profile is designed to interface with devices in a home or small building. It uses a network level security, which we will not go into detail about in this video. But as a simple overview, it is a very basic level of security designed to only allow devices in the same network to be able to decrypt each other's messages by making sure they all have a unique network-wide key. The home automation profile is intended to be used in small networks or large networks, but they are generally used in smaller networks for a home. In these networks, they are usually centralized with a gateway. Also, to avoid any sort of interference from Wi-Fi activity in the home, the recommended channels by the HA profile are channels that don't interact with the Wi-Fi bands. So, only a subset of the channels in the 2.4 GHz band get used. Examples of clusters used in this profile from the general functional domain are the basic cluster, on-off cluster, groups cluster, scenes cluster, and others. There are also functional domains such as measurement and sensing, lighting, HVAC, closures, and security safety which contain light sensing clusters, color control, thermostat clusters, shade control clusters, alarm clusters, respectively. There are many other clusters not mentioned, but they can all be found in the HA spec. The general device types in the HA profile include basic range extenders, which primarily act as a router and have no other functionality. More interesting devices include on-off switches and their corresponding outputs. There are also level control switches and outputs, mains outlets, remote control outfit, and configuration tools. The lighting-based devices include a light, light switch, a dimmer, occupancy, and light sensor, and many more. There are also shades and shade controllers, HVAC lighting and cooling devices, thermostats, temperature, pressure, and flow sensors, and pumps in their controllers. Finally, our IAS or intruder alarm systems have warning devices, controllers, and indicators, and finally, zone-based devices. Next, we have Zigbee Lightlink, commonly referred to as ZLL. ZLL was designed for consumer-grade lighting devices that were in a small network. It used similar clusters to home automation, such as the ones mentioned earlier in the videos for the groups, scenes, lighting control, and on-off functional groups. In ZLL, there is no coordinator, but instead uses a touch linking method for commissioning. The basics of this method includes initiators scanning for target devices to touch link into a network. One of the nice parts of ZLL is that it can coexist with HA profile devices once they are part of the same network, as ZLL acts very similar to HA once it is in the network, where the big difference is the commissioning method. By comparison, the smart energy profile is designed as a way to regulate the energy of devices used in the home as opposed to regulating the devices themselves, which is the intention of HA and ZLL. In a sense, smart energy is the advanced metering infrastructure, or AMI, often referred to as the smart grid, which interfaces with home area networks, or HAN. So, this is a way for the utility to tie energy management at a utility level back to an in-home level. Due to the nature of this, there is sensitive data being transferred back and forth. So, that means you need to take a basic level of security that you had with home automation 
and add some extra features. While there is still the network-wide encryption mentioned before in regards to the HA network, there is also basic level encryption with the APS layer slightly higher up. So at the APS layer, a pair of devices may have their own key that the rest of the devices in a network do not have, allowing for secure messaging between the pair devices. There is a trust center in the network that facilitates the creation and transfer of the APS layer key. The trust center is typically the device that connects the home to the smart grid. The method used to negotiate the key is called key establishment and there is a cluster used for it. The cluster uses elliptic curve cryptology, or ECC, to facilitate this encryption. ECC is a sophisticated encryption algorithm patented by Certicom. Another feature involved with SC is anonymous messaging. So a device may message anyone listening on the channel with public information. This involves pricing data for utility service as well as any event messages that the utility wants to get out to the customer base. This is used to help with the fact that SE and HA devices may have different design needs and may not reside on the same network. This negates the need for a specialized Zigbee device. SE also uses fragmentation, which is actually required. This allows for a message to be broken up as if it may be normally too big for a typical Zigbee packet. Similar to HA, SE attempts to use channels that do not overlap with Wi-Fi channels. SE uses the cluster's key establishment, which was already discussed briefly. It uses pricing for delivery of product data about utility service, as well as demand response and load control, which is the utility's ability to regulate electricity and other usage in your home in the event of a grid shortage. Simple metering is used for accessing a meter usage data, typically as a way to display device information. The message cluster can be used in conjunction with the simple metering cluster to send the information over the air to the necessary devices. Then there is tunneling, which allows for sending no Zigbee protocol data over a Zigbee packet. Tunneling is mainly used for legacy or more sophisticated protocols. Lastly, there is the prepayment cluster, which is still being worked on. This would provide customers with the ability to prepay for a block of energy. Device types in SE include the Energy Service Portal, or ESP, this is a gateway between utility and home, which typically acts as a coordinator and trust center. There is also gas, water, and electric metering devices, in-home displays, programmable computing thermostats, or PCT, load control devices, smart appliances, prepayment terminals, and again, a range extender. As a recap, we discussed the basics of the HA, ZLL, and SE profile along with devices and clusters they utilize. Thank you.